1999 Honda Accord, and we have a VTEC system malfunction trouble code. So the first thing that we want to do is go to our data pins and take a look at our VTEC switch, oil pressure switch, and our VTEC solenoid. And uh, yeah, I can do that here, can't I? Yeah. See, it says on, VTEC oil pressure switch says on. We're not sure if that's normal with the key on engine off or not. We did a little bit of homework on that to find out. And what we found out was with no oil pressure, the switch should say on. So we are reading the correct information on that. So no oil pressure, just the key on, on is normal. So what we want to do is we want to energize this VTEC solenoid and make sure that this switch input changes and we want to go through on how to do that. So. Information. And we're going to go to engine performance. We'll go to our wiring diagrams. First thing we want to do is we want to address the switch, the oil pressure switch, and see if it is a pull up or pull down design switch input. I believe that was on figure three. Was it? The switch, the switch part I believe was on figure three. Yeah. There's our VTEC oil pressure switch. Switch input designs what you want to do. You see that okay? Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yep. Switch input designs on any car, switch input. You follow the wire that doesn't go to the computer. This blue with the black goes right to the computer. It says VTEC oil pressure switch. You see the wire that doesn't go to the computer goes to a ground. That means that this is a pull down design switch input. That means the computer sends voltage on this wire and it gets pulled to ground by the switch. If we look at that side, actually it'd be better if I zoom out for this part. Switch is right here. All this says on the computer is uh, VT, what's that say? I can't read that. Um, is it an M? It's probably module. VTM? Maybe monitor? I don't know what, what abbreviation they're using there. In any case, that is my switch, my VTEC oil pressure switch that changes hydraulic pressure, changes the switch. Internal to the computer, what is inside of here is a resistor and a source and a voltage sensing circuit. Now we don't know what this source is. It could be anywhere from 5 to 12 volts. I'm guessing it's a 12 volt design. So computer sends out 12 volts possibly across a current limiting resistor on its way to the switch. The switch pulls it to ground. That's what's inside the computer. So with the switch closed, like it is in this picture, our voltage right here would be the same as the voltage right here on this monitored circuit. It'd be zero volts. Zero volts. In our case, this is the normal position of it, and what we can say with what we know right now, which on the scan tool is zero volts equals on, on that data pin. Okay? When the switch opens, it's opening to ground. Switch open. What's voltage going to read right here? It'll be the same as what's inside of here. Computer's watching right here. What's, what are we going to read? Let's call it 12. Switch opens, we read 12. So we said 0 volts was on and 12 volts is off. That's how the switch is functioning. Okay? Hydraulically, that switch closes and opens with hydraulic pressure. Computer monitors this circuit by watching a 12 0 signal as it turns the solenoid on and off. This is the input side, this is what's being watched. Let's look at the output side now. This is on figure one. We're going to look at the solenoid now. Okay, so we're looking, we're now on figure one, we're looking at the VTEC solenoid part. Now, this is the output of the computer. 
The computer controls this solenoid. You can see that it's grounded actually on the housing. That's what that is right there. Uh, there's only one wire. And what this means is this circuit right here is power side switched. And we don't see any designation in here. It just says VTS, so it's kind of unknown. But once you look at the diagram and you understand that every solenoid needs a power and a ground to work, and you can see that the solenoid already has a ground, this wire has to be a power. It is a power side switched circuit. Internal, the, the stuff you cannot see inside of here, you would have a transistor that's going to control this. Sourced from battery positive, internal from the board, that's what switches this circuit on. So what we want to do, having no bidirectional controls, we can't force this to change its state with a scanner, that would be ideal. What we're going to do, knowing with confidence that that wire gets a power, we're going to take a T-pin right here, and we're going to use a fuse jumper wire to battery positive with the engine running, we're going to energize the VTEC solenoid while we're watching the, the switch input that we just looked at, watch that switch input change. So that's what we're about to do. Energize the VTEC solenoid, watch the input change. Okay, uh, there's our VTEC solenoid to the right, there's a T-pin in the connector. Uh, can you point that out for me, Justin? Yeah, VTEC solenoid, point, put your finger on the solenoid. That's that guy right back there. And then our T-pins in the connector. We're gonna jump with a fuse jumper, battery positive, being we have no bi-directional controls. With the car running, we're gonna energize a VTEC solenoid. We should hear an RPM change, and we should see our data switch input change. You can do it right now with the key off, and we should hear a click. So let's do that first. Um, now put, go to battery positive first. There you go. And then just touch it on there. You should hear a click. Real quiet. Take it off. You can hear it. Yep. Yeah, I hear it. A couple times on and off. Okay. All right, so it is making a magnetic field. The solenoid is functional. We want to see hydraulically if it's doing its job. Go ahead and start the car. All right, go ahead and do it. Here the RPM changing. So we know mechanically it's actually doing its job. So let's look at the switch input now and see what that looks like. Okay, car's running. We're looking at our data PIDs. We're looking at our VTEC oil pressure switch right here. Uh, it says on and when we energize it, it should say off. We don't expect the command to change because we are being the computer energizing the solenoid. So we're not changing the command. Our command's gonna stay off. Go ahead and energize that. Hold it on there. You see our switch, our data switch change from on to off. That would be a good signal. That's what we want to see. That tells us this system's working like it's supposed to be. Other than, all right, let it off. Two other checks for us to do would be checking the computer driver, making sure the driver can still turn the solenoid on and making sure our control wire to the solenoid has no opens and shorts. We're not addressing those two. We have to do a test drive uh, to make this VTEC solenoid turn on. We have to test drive the car. Uh, we can't do that in here. We're gonna do that last. Final thing I wanna show would be the front door test of that switch input, which would be, what does it look like? What does on look like? What does off look like? If you didn't have a scan tool, I wanna show you that you can do this without a scan tool. Okay, we're gonna do the manual VTEC pressure switch and solenoid test, and we need to know which one the signal wire is. You can see right here, it's blue with a black. The brown with the black is the ground, and the blue with the black is the signal wire. So we need to know that to know which one to check, which one to T-pin is the blue-black wire. All right, I have the VTEC pressure switch unplugged just so we can get to the wires, see what ones we were dealing with. You see the blue with the black is the one that I have T-pinned. We're gonna plug that back in and we're gonna put a voltmeter on this T-pin. We're gonna watch that one which is the signal voltage while we energize the solenoid, which is over here. Don't do this wrong and put power on that other pin. 
Okay, I have a voltmeter connected to the switch input wire through a T-pin, and I have a T-pin on the solenoid. What we're gonna do is we're gonna energize the solenoid with the engine running while we watch the voltage on the VTEC oil pressure switch. And what we should see is, I got, I'm using the Varus, uh, using the voltmeter mode because I'm simulating uh, what a voltmeter would look like. What we should see with the car running, when we do that, that should change from zero to 12 or whatever the switch input voltage is. So go ahead and start the car. Let's see if we can start show this. Car. Okay, got low voltage at idle, which is what we expected. It's a normally closed switch. We expected to see zero volts. Go ahead and uh, connect the battery. Let's see if I can see the voltmeter. I hold it there. Got 13 volts, let off the split off and hit it again. So 13 4, so it's a 12 volt pull down type switch input. That's how you check it. That is functioning like it should. Again, so you have the right perspective. What we're doing is we're monitoring the switch input where my yellow probe is. And go ahead and jump the solenoid so I can show it. And we're jumping the solenoid, and every time we do that, our switch input is changing to 13, 14 volts battery voltage. That is a good switch, that is a good solenoid, that is a working system. Last thing we gotta check, computer driver, and the control wire to the solenoid. Okay, final thing that needs to be done, we're gonna go do this now. We're gonna take the car for a test drive, we're gonna watch these two data pids. What we wanna see is a computer to command this solenoid to turn on, and we wanna see our VTEC oil pressure switch change. If we see the oil pressure switch change, the same time the command is turned on, then we can be confident that our control wire is good and our computer driver is good, which was our last two issues. This being an intermittent problem, there is oil in the VTEC solenoid connector, which could be our problem. Uh, this thing's gonna need a solenoid regardless, us having oil in that connector. However, we wanna make sure the driver and the control circuit's good. So test drive is in order. Okay, this was the result of the final test, which was on a test drive. You see to the left is our VTEC solenoid command and the data pit to the right is our VTEC oil pressure switch and you see the same time that it was commanded on, the computer commanded the solenoid to work, that our oil pressure switch in fact changed from on to off. So that confirms that our transistor is good and that confirms our wiring integrity is good from the computer to the solenoid. And so we're just gonna put a VTEC solenoid in this based on the fact that the connector's filled with oil and that it needs a solenoid for that reason. And uh, we'll go from there. So that's it. That's how you do a VTEC system check on a Honda.